buying food was a ginormous psychological shift. I don't know what to buy. What food can I buy? I hadn't ever gone through that learning process ever. I was 42 before I had my first egg. And the reason for that, because my body has an inability to process an amino acid called phenylalanine. It was only when I was introduced to this drug, it meant that my tolerance level from food increased for protein, which was great because I could try different foods out. Whoa. Nearly. So when I actually had the tolerance level from this to be able to consume this, my brain had to go for a very unique shift. Not only for actually what the hell do I do with this in order to prepare it, but also for eating it as well. Even, even buying food was a ginormous psychological shift and one that I'd never been through, or something that significant throughout my whole life. I'm sure for those who have responded to the drug as well as I have and have passed the trial, have gone through just as much of a psychological shift and learning when it comes to purchasing and approaching food as well. And the type of thought processes that was going through my mind at the time, especially, especially in the early stages, was, I don't know what to buy. What food can I buy? If I buy it, what can I put it with? What type of meals can I create? What protein content is in there? What type of you know, nutrients are in there? The whole thing was overwhelming, really, because it was, and it sounds silly, right? And it probably is, but I'd spent the majority of my life where 80% of foods, roughly, were just off the table. They weren't an option. Here I am, all of a sudden, with all these options in front of me that I just ignored, um, because of health reasons, for my whole life. And I was put into a position now, thankfully, and I'm extremely grateful for it, that I didn't have all the options, but I had much more options than I'd ever had before. And that was massively overwhelming. I remember walking into a store numerous times, actually, and just staring at the shelves for a while thinking, right, where do I actually start here? It was, it was like learning food all over again. Actually, to be honest, though, if we think about it, I hadn't ever gone through that learning process ever. So it was like starting completely, completely fresh. And that is, for someone with a condition like I've got, that's what a wonderful opportunity that is. But it's a huge task. The amount of learning that I was having to go through was ginormous. And I'm so grateful for that. But um, yeah, it was unique. It was unique. Now, I was also counting protein, yes, but I was also counting calories and macronutrients like carbohydrates and fats as well. So that did make the overall process and experience probably bigger and larger than it probably could have or should have been. But then that's a process that I've done and experienced for the last four, four and a half years, really. So even though I handled it well, though, it probably was a lot to do throughout a medical trial. So there's a psychological shift that we have to go through. And that was quite a battle in some respects. Now, of course, there's a completely different battle being had by those individuals who have gone through a PKU drug medical trial, but ended up not securing the drug lifelong because they didn't respond well enough to meet the trial strict criteria. The challenge for them is the drug being taken away. For me, that's going to have to be a separate video that I explore. And so the egg was the one that I decided that I kind of wanted to try. And it was weird, right? Because I'd avoided it for so long. My brain had literally made, I don't know, I don't know if it was a defense mechanism or something. And it probably was, right? A defense mechanism of, you know, this is a horrible product. You shouldn't have it really. It was like my brain was sabotaging itself um, in order to keep my body um, safe. I saw it as a, as a food-based product that come out of a bird's bum. I saw it as like a baby egg, a baby chicken. Hold on. The chicken's a bird, right?
Wait, 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 wait. Before you judge me too heavily here, what I meant was that chickens don't really fly, do they? So anyway, my experience was that of like a five-year-old, and clearly not unknowing if a chicken is a bird or not, kind of proves that, right? But in terms of food, yeah, it was like being a primary school age child because I didn't even know what to do with it when I could actually attempt to try it. I remember literally approaching my wife. I literally remember approaching my wife and saying, listen, I don't know what to do here. I've got this in my hand and I don't even know what to do, which sounds crazy, but it was true. I didn't even had a had a crack it yet. She had to actually show me the first time. I didn't even know how to boil it, fry it, whatever. And it sounds so silly, but it's kind of, that was my life, right? Literally pure avoidance, um, which is kind of sad, really, isn't it? My brain definitely sabotaged myself, though, because I saw it also that basically I'm eating the egg of a chicken um, and it was a baby chick that just wasn't developed. So it was like the period of a chicken. And that just kind of freaked me out a bit. Right. Um, so it was just another way of my brain protecting itself by sabotaging my own thoughts about it. The emotional journey of food for people with PKU is just ridiculous. Yeah, and I can only talk about my experience and this is my own. But also, my eight-year-old boy knew how to do this as well. And he kind of did it for me once as well, which is kind of shocking. And for all I know, that mine might be a really unique experience, right? Uh, other people who may have the condition that probably don't have this, I'm just probably weird. Kind of mental approach that was needed to unlearn everything I'd had previously and start to consume new foods that I've never tried before that I've avoided completely and was really really strict with it strong willpower mass avoidance but the the psychological effect that that has on an individual while they're having to kind of unwrap that um, as a process just so you can start trialing new foods it probably sounds silly yeah um, and it might be to be fair, definitely something that was like a tight knit box or padlocked all in my head. And I had to kind of release those chains over time. Um, and it's just a silly egg. We live in such a limited life, right? When it comes to food and, and there's so many individuals who are in that situation. It's just such a shame because life and, and humanity kind of bond over food as one i mean we bond over many different aspects don't we but food is definitely a strong one and we're we cut out of that and the effects of that are huge and we're going to go on to that um in in different videos food the egg in particular throughout the kuvan trial for me was yeah hand in hand probably the one one of the biggest obstacles i was to overcome um the other one was meat but i'm going to do a separate video for that as well so I would be interested to know if any of those individuals that have had their tolerance level increased because of whatever drug that's out there that you're potentially on, how you overcome that and what kind of the psychological effects were going through your head, because this was definitely one for me.